Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Chill Survival Series. Today we're going to transform our nether portal into a castle tower. We have a lot of big adventures ahead of us today to get the materials we need, so let's get started. So a while back we needed some materials from the nether. We ended up building a portal on top of a nice hill by the enchanting area, and then we pretty much forgot about it after that. Yeah, this was looking pretty sad up here. And I don't think these dirt corners are doing it any favors either. So I had the thought that we could transform this portal into a bit of a tower. That way it would look really cool on its own, but it's also something we could easily expand upon in the future if we wanted to. And in terms of block palette, I was thinking of making the tower out of mud bricks and spruce, because I think that it would fit the cottage core theme really nicely. The only thing is that mud can be a very tedious thing to manually make, meaning it would definitely be more beneficial for us to gather it from a mangrove swamp, which we haven't discovered yet. But hey, an adventure to the mangrove would mean we would finally have every single wood type as well. So I think it's a win-win. All right, if we want to go out and explore, we're definitely going to need a lot more than four stakes. Sorry, my friends. Sorry. All right, that should be more than enough food for us. I grabbed a ton of wheat from the field earlier, and we're definitely going to keep that aside because we're going to need that to make the packed mud later on. Okay, quick side note. Whenever I walk back from the barn, I always stop to look at that spot on top of the hill by the lake. I feel like that sloped hill would be perfect for a windmill and a bunch of farmland around it. Now that we have a bunch of builds placed close by, I think it would massively help transform this area. I'm thinking that might be the next project after this one. All right, let's go ahead and get some of the steak cooked up. 26 should do the trick, I should say. I mean, I hope I don't use it all. Otherwise, that would mean I got myself into trouble or I'm severely lost. Now, the one last thing I want to do before we head out is fix up my shovel really quickly. We're going to be shoveling up a ton of mud and this thing's looking pretty rough. The last thing we want is our good shovel breaking when we're really far from home. That would stink. Let's get this thing in our offhand and collect some XP for it. I think this last swipe should do the trick. Okay, its durability is at like 99.9%, .9%, but in my heart, it's 100. So it's good enough for me. All right, I'm just gonna make myself a fresh new bed and a boat, and then I think we're pretty much good to go. So I think it's time for us to head off on another adventure. Now, it feels like we've traveled in every direction except for the area behind this cliffside. So let's test our luck and see what's off in this direction. Oh! <gasps> Did I already find a shipwreck? This is so close to our base. Oh my gosh. It's been here all along and I haven't even noticed it. All right, let's dig down. And hopefully the map isn't buried too far down. Oh, there's one chest. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, yum, poisonous potatoes. I love those. Let's grab these carrots and wheat just in case. But if we've got to ditch them later on, that's fine. All right, so that one doesn't have the map, which means there's one more chest to find with the map in it. There it is. Oh. Uh oh, I did not mean to do that. Okay, we got the map. We got the map. It's fine. Crisis averted. <laughs> okay, let's get out of here. Wait, why did I do that? Jeez, my brain is like short circuiting right now. Oh gosh, come on. I am very much struggling to leave this shipwreck. Whew, I was starting to doubt that I was going to make it out of there. All right, let's find this buried treasure. I'm really hoping it's a good one because yeah, that was a little bit of a struggle for me. Okay, I think it wants us to head down this river. I'm assuming it's taking us towards the ocean that's nearby. Oh, yes, perfect. Okay, the map's starting to fill itself out now, which means we're close. It looks like it should be right around here, I think. Well, there's only one way to find out. Oh no, I'm running out of air. Oh, oh no, it's happening again. Oh, I'm gonna use up all my food if I keep doing this. I think I would benefit from respiration on my helmet. There it is. Oh, we found it. We found it. Ow, please be something good. Ooh, okay, not bad. I'll definitely be taking most of this. And the not so valuable stuff, you know what? We can just leave behind, it's fine. I mean, despite eating like half our food supply to get that treasure, I would say that was pretty good. All right, let's get back to the task of finding that mangrove. All right, I mean, we've gotten into some rocky terrain, which isn't what I'm looking for, but hey, it's a biome change, so that's a good sign, I think. These rocky mountaintops always have so much spare iron and coal around them. I know I have to be aware of the little inventory space that I have, but I think it's worth gathering a little bit here and there. Hello, my little llama friends. How do you do? Hope you're having a fine morning. Oh, that really does sound lovely. All right, as much as I would love to mine all this coal and iron, we have a different biome that we need to keep searching for. <gasps> Jungle, we found a warm biome. I repeat, we have found a warm biome. Oh boy, that is some heavy rainfall. 
Oh, you know what I see right there? Bamboo. The last time we were in the jungle, we actually didn't manage to get any bamboo. All we need is just a little bit because it grows incredibly fast and it's easy to replant. Not only is bamboo really useful, it's also such a good decorative item to have as well. All right, the weather settled down and we've also hit a savanna. So we're really far into all of the warm biomes, which means there's gotta be a mangrove around here somewhere. And it looks like we found a desert. I'm really having some bad luck today, aren't I? I am happy we found the desert though, because I have been looking for cactus because it's great for making green dye out of. Plus it looks super cute in pots. Whoa! I was not expecting that. It seems as though we're finding every other warm biome we've been missing but the mangrove. I mean, I'll take it, but this is just getting kind of funny at this point. <gasps> That's a mangrove tree. I think we finally found it. Yes. Oh my gosh. I've been walking around for so long. I honestly was starting to doubt that I would ever come across one. Okay, I don't have much inventory space left, so I am gonna have to get rid of some of this stuff that we can just easily make at home. Cause we are gonna need tons of space for mud. I'm also not gonna bother collecting any mangrove wood itself. Instead, I'm just gonna collect these saplings and bring them home with us. <gasps> Look at the frogs. Oh my gosh. Oh, I wish I could bring you home with me, but we're like thousands of blocks away. All right, let's get into what we came here to do. Shoveling as much mud as we possibly can. I'm so happy we repaired this shovel before we left because look at how much it's already degraded. It looks like we might need to get on breaking from a villager sooner rather than later. Come on, buddy, hang in there. Please don't die on me. I just need a little bit more mud. Okay, we've got ourselves around 14 stacks and I think that should be good. The build isn't gonna be that big, so hopefully we won't go through it all. I just wanted to make sure we had enough so we didn't have to come back here because it's really far away. Okay. I think we've got everything we need from here, plus our shovel's on its last legs, so I think it's time for us to head on home. Whew, and it looks like we finally made it home. It's kind of funny how much you begin to miss your base when you're gone for that long. Dang, it's starting to feel really cozy around here. Okay, first things first, let's get some of this stuff put away. We'll pop all this iron in the furnace, and let's get all these valuables put away. So the first thing that we're gonna have to do is collect a ton of wheat so we can turn all of this mud into mud bricks. There's definitely not enough wheat here for every single stack of mud we have, but we can always let it regrow and harvest some more while we're building. So that means we've got quite a bit of replanting to do. Honestly, while we're at it, we might as well expand this field a little bit more. It'll make collecting wheat for this build so much more efficient. And if we are revamping our farmland next, we're gonna need a ton of seeds for that as well. All right, I added quite a bit more to this field, so I think we should be set for some extra wheat in case we need it. In the meantime, we're gonna have to work with what we have. We might also have a little bit more stashed away over here. All right, we got 45, plus we have a ton of hay bales, which I don't think I'm gonna really need to decorate with for a while. So with all of that, let's start making our packed mud. All right, we've got around four stacks to start with, which isn't too bad. However, we are probably gonna need just a little bit more than that. That's okay because in the meantime, we can gather some extra spruce and anything else we might need for this build. All right, I chopped down three trees and that should be more than enough. All right, let's go on up over to the portal area and start stashing away some of the items we're gonna be using to build this. We'll pop down our chest close by and then we'll get this stuff in here so it's no longer clogging our inventory. So I definitely intend to keep this portal the same size, having it two across and then three up. However, I think I wanna make it so there's a portal on every single side. But if we're gonna do that, we're gonna need some more obsidian. Oh, oh my gosh, that actually scared me. <laughs> That was like the worst time to pop out. I was so scared. All right, there's gotta be some lava around our base somewhere. Oh, literally over there. I thought I saw someone we were going to explore the other day. And this is the most satisfying thing you could ever do. All right, let's start the slow and painful process of tearing up obsidian. All right, I gathered up 52, which is probably more than we'll ever need. But hey, we might need it later down the road, so it's always good to have extras of everything. So let's get all of that stashed away, and then I think we're pretty much ready to begin building this thing. So let's start off by getting some of this packed mud turned into mud bricks. Oh, and I almost forgot, before we start building anything, we need to expand this portal out. And I messed that up. Yep, I definitely did. I don't know why I did that. You didn't see me do that. You did, though. Walk away. 
That's right, buddy. Walk away. All right, so let's finish building this up. So we're all done with that, and it's looking good. I am gonna leave them unlit for now, though. So I'm gonna start this build off by laying a rough entryway to the portal. Next, we're gonna build up the beams using barrels as our base, and you probably guessed it, some strips, spruce, and oak. What can I say? It just looks so good together. Then I'm gonna toss up a mud brick trim along the top to cover up the obsidian. And this is what we have for the base so far. There's a lot more to be added, but you can kind of see the direction I'm going in, at least with the palette. Before we throw up the towers, I'm gonna make one side of our base structure a little bit taller. By adding this leaning angle on the build, it's gonna make it so we can have more of an interesting trim running through the build to help kind of like lead the eyes around. And now that those are in place, we can start putting in the towers. So next I'm gonna use some slabs for the trim to match the slope of the build. The trim is definitely the detail that ties it all together. You can probably see the angled shape we're going for now a little bit more clearly. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the tower on top. So the tower above mimics the exact same slope as the one underneath it. And these lines are going to lead your eyes up to a taller tower that's going to be next to it. So now with the second tower in place, this is what it's looking like. And you can kind of get more of a picture of where we're going with this. So the shape has really come together for the front of the build. The back, however, yeah, that needs some work. And for this side, I'm gonna add a small tower similar to the one that we have at the front of the build. Now let's get the spruce trim and small tower roofs put in. Okay, enough, this shovel is literally gonna break. I need to actually put it away so I don't use it. We're going back to those trusty iron shovels for now. So this is what it's looking like with all of its trim. You can see that there are some spots that I plan to put like planters and stuff over there, just so we don't have a huge cutoff right here. But overall, it's really starting to take shape. Now the next thing that we need to put up is the roof of the big tower. I think mossy cobble and a variety of stones pair really nicely with the mud brick and spruce. It helps bring together that really earthy look we're going for. Plus, that means we can also match our pathing or other details to tie it all together a little bit more. Yeah, this has really come together. The only thing I'm gonna fix is the tower roof on the left. I feel like it would look a little bit better if the center of it had just a bit more height to it. Let's fix that up real quick. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. It was looking a little bit too flat before. All right, all that's left are the finishing touches. We'll add some details to all the windows, and we'll pop in some big planters with azalea bushes. And let's just toss up a couple of lanterns on chains in these corners. And we'll toss some planters at the front of the build as well. All right, let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think that is looking so good. So I think that's pretty much perfect in terms of detailing for the tower itself, which means all we really have that's left to do is landscaping and detailing around the build. I need to give us a little bit more space around this portal, but this shovel is just too slow. Yep, I think that means it's time for us to make another trip back to the XP farm. We've really got to get ourselves unbreaking soon. Come on. Yes, okay, perfect. This shovel is gonna make the landscaping so much easier for us. Hey, you can actually see the tower from here. This is looking so cool from our base. I love it. I'm really happy I chose something with a little bit more height so it's still viewable from a distance. There we go. Now we're making progress. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna fill in the pathing around the portal with the same blocks that I used for the tower roof. The way that I've kind of been going about with filling in my paths lately is I fill in each block type one at a time. And then from there, I kind of just randomly place the blocks. Sometimes I will have one block from the palette that's my primary block, so I'll make sure to use more of it. But other than that, I kind of just wing the pattern. But you can always make adjustments later on if things don't look totally right. All right, let's go ahead and get some steps leading up to this portal. And one more in this corner. Perfect. Now this portal does have four sides to enter, which means we could potentially have four paths leading to it. However, my base doesn't really reach anywhere else at the moment. So what I'm gonna do for now is just enclose the space with some fencing to put a nice little border around it. 
There's still more than enough space to access each side of the portal, so at least all of it is still functional. I think I'm gonna expand the cobble path out just a little bit further past these stairs. And of course, the last thing that we need to do is line the path with some coarse dirt. Talking about coarse dirt almost feels like a meme at this point, but it honestly helped blend the path so well into the grass, so I can't not use it. I'm pretty sure it was Blockdown who taught me the ways of the coarse dirt a long time ago, so we can thank him for my obsession. And final last touch are some walls with lanterns because one, they look nice, and two, I really need to start lighting up this base a bit more. I haven't been doing a really good job of that, and yeah, the mob situation has not been great. And with that, I think we are done. Let's pull her up real quick to get a better look. Yes, I am so happy with how this turned out. I feel like it's a really good mix of earthy and cottagecore-like, but also with a little bit of magic. But I just realized that the build is only 99.9% .9 complete because I actually forgot to light up the other portals. Classic. All right, let's do this and this one. And last but not least, this guy. Yes, I think this is looking so cool. I'm actually so excited about this build because honestly, usually I struggle to make nether portals look good. My default is usually to make it look super overgrown or embed it into like a cave or a mountainside. So this is a pretty big departure from what I often default to. And I'm super happy I went with a completely different design this time. All right, so our portal is done. And now let me just make sure we can safely walk through it. And yep, it still spits us out into this terrible place. Perfect. I will now be leaving this immediately again. All right, the portal's working as it should, so that's good. So really the only thing left to do now is to connect a dirt path from our base to this portal so we can more easily access it. I feel like it would look kind of cool if we forked the path off in a couple different directions over here. So I'm gonna have one that connects close to this enchantment table over here. But I feel like we could make another access point close by, probably starting from about here. Then I think it would look kind of cool if the path sort of dipped right down here and connected up with this one here. The two paths are quite close together, so it is like unnecessary in a couple of ways, but I think it's really nice to have a bunch of paths converging into one area like this. The one thing we can actually do to fix this is replant some of the trees we took down so the paths aren't as visible next to one another. There, that's looking a lot better. Now you can barely tell the two paths are next to one another, and it feels more like you're walking through a forest again. Plus, with all of these trees back, there's a lot more interesting lines of sight. If all of these trees were gone, you would be able to see the build basically from anywhere around the base. But with all of them here, you can only catch glimpses of it from certain angles, which I think makes it a lot more interesting. Then if we walk up the path to the portal, the whole thing is revealed to us. I'm still so happy with how this turned out. All right, with all of this done, I think that's pretty much it for today's episode. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing because it really helps out the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!